Hello, this is Clemmy Hughes and welcome to the Demo Memo. This time, we will take a look at Necro Cosmos, a very ambitious open-world Metroidvania which spans an entire galaxy, currently on Kickstarter and being developed by Andromeda Project. You play as Max Reaver, a bounty hunter who is tasked with finding a group of missing scientists. But this mission quickly evolves into something much larger and much more sinister. Based on the demo and the Kickstarter page, it seems as though the developers have put in quite a large amount of work into the game, since there is quite a bit of writing and a hefty chunk of lore. The world of Necrocosmos does feel fleshed out, and simply based on this fact, I can definitely see the effort that the developers are putting in. The gameplay is split into two, one which is a vertical shoot'em up, which occurs when you are travelling from planet to planet, while the other is your typical side-scrolling metroidvania platformer. For the shoot'em up phase, while I did not encounter this personally, it seems as though you would be interrupted by pirates, unidentified objects, and even large bosses as you travel, and I thought that this was a neat little way of incorporating gameplay elements from different genres into a single game. While the controls were rather basic, the action felt fine, and you are supposed to be able to upgrade your ship, so definitely looking forward to a more in-depth look at this system. The meat of the game, however, is the side-scrolling platforming. Here, instead of a jump, Max is equipped with a jetpack that allows him to ascend for a short period of time, after which he must land in order for the jetpack to automatically refuel. While initially strange, the jetpack mechanic did really grow on me and it became kind of a second nature to me. Do note that there is fall damage in this game, which of course can be negated by tapping on the jetpack button. One of the main hooks in the game is your weapon, named the DNA gun, which allows you to collect and combine DNA from defeated enemies. This does work like the system in Gunstar Heroes, where combining different colours of DNA will result in different weapons, such as two blues resulting in a freeze gun, allowing you to freeze water to create platforms, or a red and a yellow which results in an orb which detonates after a while, releasing an electric charge. Holding down the fire button allows you to release the super shot, but this charge up process does consume a large amount of ammo. However, enemies do seem to drop DNA pretty generously, so there's always something new to explore. You do even have two chambers in your gun to queue up different types of weapons, which can be crucial if you are keen on tackling some of the environmental puzzles in the world. Speaking of puzzles, the Kickstarter page does promise some of it, which is not only limited to environmental ones such as the aforementioned freezing of water, but does also include having you to research lost documents and to actually read and decipher the text in the game. This is also tied in with the non-linear generation of the galaxy, in which all planets are handcrafted, but the order which the player encounters them in is randomized, encouraging exploration and perhaps prompting players to keep a little journal or log of their own. The main currency here is resources, obtained from killing enemies, blowing up rocks, opening lockers or simply scattered about in the environment. These are not only used to repair your armor, which is your HP in this game, but is also used to purchase upgrades, which is the Metroidvania element. Upgrades here include decreasing your jetpack refuel time, increasing your max armor, or even to increase the effectiveness of repair kits that you find. I believe that eventually, there will be upgrades to increase your jetpack capacity, allowing you to reach higher areas, increasing the range of places that you can explore. Interestingly, you must spend resources in order to save your game, which I thought added some weight and consequence to the action of saving. You will also encounter boss fights during your adventures, both in space as previously mentioned, as well as on land. And from my experience and what I have seen on their page, these seem to be more on the bullet hell side of things. I am comfortable with such games, but if you are not, this may be one of the main sticking points for this game. Finally, there also seems to be a large number of different types of armor corresponding to different biomes such as underwater, snow or lava, as well as a large number of alien species, each with their own lore and backstory. As a result, I believe that Nico Cosmos, if funded, would be an expensive open-world metroidvania experience which could potentially be really really good. As of the date of this upload, there should be a couple more days left on the Kickstarter campaign, so usual caveats notwithstanding, do check it out through the link in the description below.
Anyway, that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.